Okay, so let's make it a little bit more advanced and let's head into the settings in G Reminders. And we're just going to go through each section so you fully understand uh, what, are, what are all the functionality and what, what are the things that you can change as well. So some of these things will touch on some of the other videos that, uh, that I've already done uh, for G Reminders. So make sure you check those out. I'll link up somewhere for those. Uh, so have a look at those and have a look at the, uh, the uh, playlist that I've got set up as well. So here we go. We've logged in. Here are some example meetings. We're going to go first to settings over here by clicking the little cog icon. Now on the general page, we can edit the name of our company. We can change the notifications. So this is normally default, normally working hours. And I changed it before in one of my other videos. I'm just changing it back now. So we make only send notifications during, let's say work hours. And this is for, this is for us. This is for our customers or our clients. So it's good to keep them within sensible hours. We can say, we can tick um, only send customer reminders where the event owner is the organizer and uh, which is good to keep it ticked. We can edit and change some of these other settings as well. So like notifications you can have uh, for new bookings coming in, for reschedules, all these information. This is, this is for you. And in some cases probably don't want to have SMS, but up to you and how you want to use it. Here we can have, uh, so yeah, as it says, the um, SMS notifications, they, it uses the default number um, for the user's mobile number. And you can also add uh, another number if you have uh, someone else that you need to kind of CC, let's say, in the SMS notification. Uh, similar for the emails as well. So, you know, if you want to centralize all of this communication going out, you can include that here as well. So this is in addition to uh, for example, me, I'm using, I'm the one, the user in this case, setting it up. And I could also send it to an assistant or uh, someone that's helping me manage all of these. And then also you've got uh, the email replies. So with the, with the email reminders, when people reply to that, uh, you can have a different email address, uh, which will, which those will go to. Uh, we can change the country for the user. Mine is set to Australia because that's where I'm at at the moment and obviously language so i'll just save that and then we've got the reminder templates i did a video that focused on this but basically these reminder templates so check out that video but these reminder templates can be set up for many different cases depending on kind of like setting up a little mini automation so you can click add template and then you can add in uh, what you want the template to do so it can be a reminder it can be a follow-up it can be about the initial booking and then you can set the criteria. So for example, when the event title contains the word consulting call, uh, it sets all of that. It looks for that uh, default. I mean, it could be just, for example, whenever it's something to do with, um, you know, like a callback or it could be webinar, whatever you want it to be, as long as the, the calendar invite or the event title includes that in the title of that act of that and then you can then set what to happen so it can then send an email one hour before the webinar to go to all the people that are registered for that and then here you can edit the body using the variables so i'm just leave that for now because i've already set these other ones up and then we've got keywords so keywords is interesting because keywords allows you to map a certain word that the G reminder system finds inside a, an email, a, a meeting title or a calendar invite title, wherever it finds that keyword, if that exists, then it will communicate or send to the uh, phone number that you put here. So for example, the example they give, which is a good one. If any, anything has any event has staff in the title, then send a message to, you know, whatever the phone number is for, for that person. And you could set up multiple numbers, uh, one each line, so that they will get notified. So this isn't working because it's a fake number, but you get the idea. So this is quite useful if you don't necessarily want to have uh, just one number that you have to always add in to the title of that um, calendar entry. Instead, you would just have this set up like a little kind of like a tag or label 
uh, and it's looking for that and then it will send to a list of phone numbers uh, every time automatically. Then we've got users. So in this case, it's just me, but in other cases, you would have different people using, could have, you know, team members using the account. The phone number that the SMSs are being sent from. The integrations you have set up. So I've done a, I've done some videos about this, specifically about setting up Zoom, uh, but and Google Meet is already set up. But then you can choose many other integrations here as well. Then there's opt out. So if there's any phone numbers, people that have uh, let you know that they don't want to be communicated with in this fashion, you can add them as a blacklist or if you choose not to uh, communicate with them, you can add them here for their phone number and you can also add them for their email or their domain. And you can also do keyword as well. So this is a, let's say it's anything that's got, you know, for example, personal in the title, then make sure you don't send anything concerning that uh, meeting. Then you've got the usage reports, so how you're using the account, country support, so if you want to, uh, which countries you want to be sending from or to. So advanced, here we can decide what are the fields that the system pulls the information from. So for example, in, in some of the other tutorials I've done, usually I, I get the phone number pulled from the event description. We could, for example, start having adding details to the event location. We need to turn this on here for the phone numbers. So you can control which, which fields. Let's say you don't want to include event description because the wrong phone number is always added there, you know, like you're using a different number included in the event description. Uh, so then you would untick this and you would make sure the phone numbers are always just added into the event title. Because G, one of G Reminder's cool features is that it's extracting the phone number and the email address from within the event um, invitation or the you know the, the event setup so that you don't have to like type copy paste phone numbers um, it's automatically pulled from that when it's set up and then we've got billing so for the billing for the different levels so you know I've been using I've been trialing for the last seven days and the next step would be for me to uh, select the standard or the pro account depending on what I'm going to be doing I think the standard is is probably pretty good for my needs but you know, if you've got no budget, then there's even a free plan if you're just looking to send out email reminders as well. And there are a lot of other plans, much bigger plans, up to you and your needs as well. So that's the settings. And then if we go over here to profile, so you go to my profile. So here you can edit all the details relating to your profile. You can adjust the notification settings that you've set up for your availability. And then to allow, if you want to allow reschedules, if you want to allow cancellations, it's up to you as well. And you can also set up personal reminders here. Then we've got my calendars. So here I've just ticked for meetings. I've set up this calendar just to give some examples and to show you how to use a system. But you can also turn on multiple calendars if you wanted to. You've got the contacts. So you can connect up your contacts with Google contacts to your account here. And this way it can be even smarter and it can look for the details for the, for the person in your contact system as well. So that can be quite powerful to use. Share my link is the, uh, the link for your account for sharing meetings. Let me just open up this one as an example here. So this is where the user you know, your customer, you can send them this link or you can have it in your email signature and they can select if they want to do the consulting call, we got these automation trainings and you can see that, see the uh, class, the tutorial I did before about setting up these as well, the uh, consulting call, the weekly, and you can set up many different kinds of meetings. Let me click this. You can see every 15 minutes, people can schedule a time with their details here. Okay, let's go back. And then you can also change and kind of brand the uh, the different things. So like, for example, we might you might want to make this, I, I might make this some kind of like a blue, like the terrific blue. And then, you know, let me make this a lighter blue here. We'll save that. Let's have a look at this again. There we go, change to the blue. So make it a little bit more branded. 
which can be nice to do. Okay, and then we've got event types. So this is, again, this is this, what I went through before with setting up the different uh, times, meeting schedule, uh, calendar. Here you can add in the different event types that you're running. So you could have, for example, consulting call, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, two hours, and you could have all separate event types here. And you can also do group events, such as the, uh, I've given this example, weekly automation training. Uh, it could be a webinar, mini conference, whatever you wanna do with a group. And then we've got connected services. So these are the two that I set up already as well in the other one of the other tutorials. This one with my Zoom account, and this is sort of the default with Google Meet. And then you can also go into the help and support and then obviously log out. And that's basically, that's it. So give it a go. Let me know what your experience is like with this. I think I find G Reminders to be a nice, uh, pretty simple, but effective tool. Uh, very similar to Calendly, um, pretty similar to Acuity scheduling, but with some additional functionality around SMS sending uh, follow-up reminders for, for meetings as well. And, you know, not too expensive, I think, for, um, for the, the value of using it. So check it out. Let me know what you think. Any questions you have, I uh, look forward to hearing from you. Okay, thanks so much. Cheers.